everyone. Welcome back to the Morning Grind podcast presented by rotogrinders.com. I'm your host, Stevie TPFL. It's April 28th. It's a Thursday slate. We got day baseball. We got night baseball, but we're covering all here on the Morning Grind today. And I got a special guest today. Um, you guys know her as N Valencia 30. I know her as Nicole, and um, I've met her a couple times at some um, Fantasy Aces Live Finals here. How are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing pretty well. How are you? Oh, I'm I'm, I'm peachy. The course is starting to score some runs. Everybody knows we record this podcast the night before, so it's Wednesday night. Breaking down the slate, going game by game here. Um, Nicole, give us a little background on yourself here. Sure. Um, I guess I play most DFS sports. I'd say my favorites are NFL, MLB, and college basketball. RIP college basketball, college football, but um, yeah, you know, it's baseball season now, so excited to get going and hopefully do some more stuff with Roto Grinders and Grinders, Grinders Live here in May, so um, I do some technical work for Roto Grinders part-time right now, so we should have a new extension coming out for DraftKings anytime here that will help with uh, player exposure percentages and rake and overlay on the lobby just like on fan duel so so yeah look for that um i'm excited to finally get to roll that out here that's awesome now uh, you know we don't have to spend a lot of time on it but i still find it really awesome like what we did um at angel stadium last year for the fantasy aces baseball championship and um how was that for you I, I know how it was for me but how was it playing home run derby at angel stadium it was so cool, and it really it was probably a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Um, you know, we basically had the stadium rented out for the Fantasy Aces party, and so we got to hit in the batting cage. We had the Angels trainer that kind of walked us through things. We did drills on the field. Um, of course, we got to hit from second base and have our little home run derby and then go to Kettle One sweet level and – set lineups in the afternoon so really awesome to kind of watch all the games there and it was a great time you know it's always great to meet new people that you know in dfs but you don't actually know through meeting them in person so uh that was just yeah probably my favorite live final oh yeah by far my favorite live final i've been to the play one mansion a couple times hitting baseballs at angel stadium by far my favorite like it, it was just so cool because, like, me and Tommy G, like, we made our lineups in the press room, in the Angels press room. Like, this little room that, like, all these players, like, do interviews and stuff, and we're sitting there setting up fantasy lineups. But don't have to spend a lot of time on that. We're going to break down this four-game early slate first before we get into the night slate. And um, we started off here with Oakland at Detroit. Chris Bassett against Anibal Sanchez. Neither one of these pitchers are guys that I like. What's your thoughts on these guys? Yeah, if I was going to take either pitcher in this game, it would be Anibal Sanchez, and that's always playing with fire. Um, he's kind of a reverse splits guy, but I it's not really the A strength to, to load up uh, the righty bats against him either. So this is kind of going to be a neutral game. I think if you're playing the all-day slate and you have A games to choose from, these aren't going to be pitchers I'm going to be targeting much. Um, you could maybe look at them as – more guys where you take one batter as a one-off play or something like that. But I don't really think either pitcher's in play for me. Yeah, even in the morning slate, um, it's a slate that Arietta is supposed to pitch um, against Milwaukee. That game got rained out on Wednesday night, so he's going to toe the hill. So we're talking aces. You know, he's definitely probably one of the top three pitchers in baseball right now. And um, it's going to be tough to take Sanchez and Bazit, even in a tournament. I feel like I have a tournament guy that I like a little bit more than these guys. So, you know, let's talk about some of these bats, and we'll start it off with the visiting Oakland Athletics. Is there anybody that you like here for athletics? I guess I'd prefer the lefties like Reddick. He's been swinging as <laughs> there aren't a lot of catcher options. Um, I think Chris Davis would be – a sneaky guy righty on righty because he does have elite ISO against right handers, but that's definitely a Jeep, a deep GPP target on the Oakland side. And that's about it for me. Maybe Coglin or Kana, if he's batting second in the lineup, if either one of them's hitting second, they could be cash options, but you know, nothing to love really. 
Yeah, Chris Davis was 1% owned in the 27 dollars tournament on DK on Wednesday night. I, I stacked up Oakland, like I said I would on the podcast yesterday. Didn't really pan out for me. Uh, Vernlander actually pitched really well in that game, which, hey, it's going to happen sometimes. You you miss and you hit. Um, I agree with you. I think Chris, Chris Davis, uh, with a K, 2700 on FanDuel, interesting tournament option. Marcus Simeon's the other guy that I like here. I hate the fact that he bats ninth, but he has some home run upside. Five home runs already this season. He hit 15 home runs last season. He's a guy that has some pop, and, you know, it's a shortstop position. It's a four-game slate. Not a lot of people are going to target a nine-hitter. Yeah. Ask Jeff L. Huffy about that, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, now the nine hole, there's your qualifier, so. <laughs> That's true. Um, now, looking at the <laughs> Tiger side of things, Bassett's a guy. He really struggles with right-handed bats. 342 Woba um, against righties in 46 qualified innings dating back to last year. He's going to face a lot of righties in this game, and J.D. Martinez is a guy I talked about it on the podcast yesterday. He's way too cheap. He's 2,900 again in the slate. He has home run upside. What's your thoughts on these Detroit bets? Yeah, very interesting to note. J.D. moved up to the two-hole ton- tonight, which would be Wednesday night, and promptly hit a home run. So they kind of swapped him and Upton from the two-hole and the five-hole, and um, we'll see if that sparks something for him. Because I do like him, and if he's going to hit second, I think he's in play not just in GPPs but in cash. Yeah, um, definitely. A lot agree. of other, you know, good bats on the right. Tigers righties there to target too, obviously with Cabrera. So, yeah. Yeah, Miggy, Miggy in a day game against a righty that struggles against righties. I feel like. He'll probably be really highly owned at 3,600, but I still think he's an excellent play here. Is there anybody else outside of Miguel Cabrera and J.D. Martinez that you like here for the Tigers? Um, Those are probably my favorites. I mean, Upton always has two home run upside, but I would rather target Cabrera and J.D. Yeah, I definitely agree. You know, Justin Upton, always a guy, if you're stacking up Detroit, you know, throw him in the stack. Ian Kinsler, uh, 3,800. His price tag is really high. He has been hitting the ball very well this season. I like him when he's cheap. I don't like him at 3,800. So for that reason, we're going to move on to Milwaukee uh, visiting the Chicago Cubs. Like we talked about, Jake Arrieta, Tyler Youngman. We want nothing to do with Youngman and all everything to do with Jake Arrieta here. Yes, of course. Everybody was ready to play Arietta until the game got rained out. And so, you know, they, they moved him back a day. So we get the same matchup here. And Arietta just an elite option. I still think for some reason he's a little bit underappreciated kind of on a national level, maybe not in DFS so much anymore. But, you know, he is an elite pitcher. He's worth the price tag. He's got basically twice as many ground balls he gives up as fly balls, which is just an insane rate. And it's not just left-handed bats. It's right-handed bats as well. So um, a terrific option. The only thing to worry about is if the wind is blowing out at Wrigley. And, you know, Vegas doesn't even set the line for these games the night before just because of all the wind in Wrigley and how it can change. So just keep an eye out for that. But it's been fairly cold in Chicago. If that keeps up, things are looking good for the pitchers. Um, so Ariad is going to be probably my top option on this slate yeah right now um we you can pull up the wind it's 14 mile an hour blowing in from right field so if that's the case it just helps them even more you're going to want to pay attention to the wind closer to game everything can change especially with weather so make sure you check that out um if it's blowing in just lock them in no no second thoughts about it um what are your thoughts here on i i'm sure you're with me i don't want to take any of the brewers against arietta here yeah, I wouldn't do that. Um, I don't even know if I were to pick one guy that would kind of be a low owned option as your um, differentiator in a GPP. I don't even really know who I would choose. I guess you could take Ryan Braun, but um, <laughs> you know, it's not a great option. Uh, I think you're just kind of more likely than not going to get that one wrong. So in that case, I'd probably just stay away. Yeah, you can take Braun. I'm not taking Braun. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm all about Arietta in this game. Not going to take any of these bats from Milwaukee. Um, but I do like some of these Cubs bats. Youngman, a guy that he struggles with right, 
batters, and he's a guy that's not too much better against lefties. He's a guy that we can target here, but I'm not all about the Cubs stack. I'm going to pick and choose here. Yeah, we may get to one of my Cubs later in the, the last segment here when we have to pick who's going to hit a home run. Um, there are a lot of a lot of different ways you could go with the Cubs here. Um, you know, they have a 355 Woba versus righties on the season, which is excellent. And, of course, you've got a lot of lefty bats that you can throw at Youngman here from Fowler to Hayward to Rizzo at the top of that lineup. Um, we'll see if Montero's catching tomorrow, but – I would kind of expect him to be playing. And uh, – or is he still out? Montero? Um, I I think that it's a day-to-day thing. He's dealing with a back. He wasn't going to play Wednesday, so we'll have to check and see how he's going – if he plays on, on Thursday morning. I mean, David Ross is not the same caliber of hitter. So, um, you know, anybody else at the top of that order, Zobrist and – Chris Bryant can hit righties, so there are some good options here. Um, I can get on board with not a full Cubs stack, but I wouldn't be surprised if people kind of go that route, especially if they see a high, you know, team total when that line comes out. Yeah, I just I weigh the wind in Chicago so much, and you know, recording the podcast, it blowing in from right field that limits a lot of these lefties. I necessarily want to target young men with lefties, but you know, if there was one guy that I was going to take here for the Cubs, it's going to be Chris Bryant. Um, his price tag at 4,400 is a little bit cheaper than Rizzo and has that double home run upside, just like Rizzo. So if I had to get some Cubs exposure, it's going to be Chris Bryant for me. Sounds good to me. And we can always talk about Dexter Fowler. He's just off to a, a scorching start. Um, just one of the best hitters to start the year. So 4,100 is up there for him. If you want some cheap exposure to the Cubs, Zobris is only 3,100. I feel like that's a good price tag for him. We got to talk about something here. We got to talk about the Coors game. It's on the early slate. So if you're playing the late slate, you can kind of get away from Coors. But if you're playing the early slate, you know, you're going to want Arietta and maybe some exposure to Coors. Um, Juan Nicasio, Tyler Chatwood. This is an interesting thing here. What are your thoughts on these pitchers? So, going to give a shout out to my Pirates fan friend and DFS player Summit Zero Ten, who knows a lot about Ray Sirage and the great job he's done as pitching coach and developing some of these guys that they bring over to the Pirates. Um, you know, the thoughts are that Juan Nicasio is going to be kind of his next reclamation project. Um, of course, Nicasio is a former Rocky before he went to the Dodgers, so he has experience pitching at Coors Field. It would be a deep GPP play, but uh, the Rockies' bats, well, until <laughs> right when we started this show, are cold right now. And if it continues to stay cold here in Colorado, weather-wise, then maybe you could take a shot on him because he is cheap. Um, and they, he's a ground ball pitcher. But, again, you know, if you're looking for somebody with low ownership, that's a way to go. Because if you're going to differentiate, you might go directly against the herd. Um, that would be an option. It's not a guy I love. Definitely wouldn't touch him in cash games. But of the two pitchers going tomorrow in Coors, I like him more than I like Chatwood. So, and that may not be saying much. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, I don't know how much that's saying. But um, <laughs> Tyler, Tyler Chatwood, he struggles with righties um, immensely. Um, ground ball rates around forty-seven percent. But if we're looking at his home run to fly ball ratio, it's massive. His wOBA is massive. His hard contact rate is massive to righties. So. I think he's in trouble here. He's going to face a lot of right-handed bats um, for the Pirates, and the, the Pirates look like the um, optimal snack here in the um, morning slate. Um, we'll talk about the Pirates first since they're a visiting team. If you had to pinpoint some of these Pirates, who do you like here? It's hard not to like McCutcheon. He is very expensive, though, at $5,000. Um, if, if they load up, they'll probably – I'd expect they have Jason lead off again since he's a lefty bat, but but yeah, Chatwood kind of has the more more difficulty against the righties. So you know, Marte is is hot right now. You could look to him. Um, I kind of even think Polanco and Cervelli would be in play. You've got to be careful if Cervelli plays since it's a day game following a night game. So make sure he's in the lineup. But 
again, I think he's a, a good catcher option at 3,800. Um, it's tough not to love all of the Pirates, quite honestly. I would expect them to come in with the highest team total on the board here. And um, I believe there are slight favorites in this game. So, you know, it's, it's always t- <laughs> hard to argue against taking bats at Coors Field, especially if in the day tomorrow it's a little bit warmer game than we've seen here in some of these night games recently. So, so yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm complaining about it being like 90 degrees and you're complaining <laughs> about it like being like 30 degrees. So we're like yeah. op- opposite ends on the spectrum here. Like, um, so it, it's interesting because I'm, you know, sweating every day and you're like wearing jackets still. So it's crazy. But yeah, um, I, I like all the pirates. I actually hope that Cervelli sits and we can get Chris Stewart at 2600. He'd probably be extremely highly owned in cash, but I love getting cheap exposure with catchers at cores and 2,600. I would load up on him there. Yeah. I pretty much agree with you. Like I I like Marte a lot. If you can fit in McCutcheon, fit in McCutcheon. He's a great play here. Um, Josh Harrison, he's only 3,900. If he gets a good lineup spot, he's another guy you can look at the Rockies against Nicasio, um, Arenado story, Carlos Gonzalez, my three favorite guys here for the Rockies. Yeah, Arenado and Story home runs here on Wednesday night. So uh, Story just got the day off, so he'll probably be in the lineup tomorrow. Cargo's kind of been cold, and he kind of is – he's a very streaky hitter. So um, you might be able to get him in a little bit lower ownership um, because he definitely has huge upside, and he can get going in a hurry. So those are probably my favorite guys, too, on the Rockies' side. Um, it depends who leads off for him. If it's Para, I think he's in playing cash games. And if it's LeMahieu, you can look to him. Um, we'll see if, if Tony Walters is in the lineup because, you know, that guy's got three stolen bases already on the season. He has a, a little bit of kind of sneaky upside that not a lot of people know about him and, and he's pretty cheap. So he could be kind of a deep flyer if you're looking for somebody that may not have the high ownership levels at Coors Field. Yeah, I like that call. Like I said, I love cheap catchers, especially at Coors. So if one of these cheap catchers gets a start here in this game, don't hate them for cash. Um, Don't hate them for tournaments. Know that their percentages are going to be high. Love Cargo at 3,900. Anytime you can get Cargo under 4K at Coors, um, I'll take the risk of him, you know, just going 0 for 4. That's variance. But love this spot for him. Philadelphia at Washington, Tanner Rorick. Against my dude, Aaron Nola. Um, I don't know if you know this or not, but I'm like the biggest Aaron Nola fan. I love this guy. I had him everywhere the other night when he scored 51 fantasy points. And um, probably going to be my, one of my favorite tournament options here on this early slate. Uh, what's your thoughts on Rorick and Nola here? Well, let's go with the bold calls first. I don't think Tanner Rorick is going to go back and get 15 more strikeouts in a game. Um, <laughs> that's so I bold. mean, it's such an outlier. Just pay attention. Some people may be on recency bias here and think, well, this guy's a great pitcher <laughs> and it may be something you can take advantage of. Don't be, don't be loading up on Rorick everywhere though, because he's really not a very big strikeout pitcher, even though the Phillies just have been striking out a ton. Um, yeah, I really like Nola as an option in cash games. He's only $7,200 on FanDuel, which is kind of where he's a discount compared to DraftKings. So I think he's a really good value play on that site. Um, it's kind of looks like the Nationals are slight favorites in the opening line here. So that's something to pay attention to, of course, on FanDuel where the wind is so important. But I agree with you. I really like him as a pitcher. I think he's got great stuff. And, you know, the Phillies got some good young arms. So – They'll be interesting to watch as this season goes on, but um, I think he's in play. He's got to work around Harper. I mean, who doesn't? But if he can do that, um, I, I like righties more against the Nationals than I do lefties, I'd say. So, so yeah, I think he's a good option. Yeah, if you're playing on a two-pitcher side in this four-game early slate, Nola's definitely my SP2. Uh, I'll take the risk of Harper. And uh, Walker here. I feel like those are the two guys that could hurt Nola. Nola's really good against righties, uh, really high strikeout rate against righties. So if he sees a lot of righties in this lineup, um, Nola definitely going to be a guy that I target here a lot in tournaments. Um, Now, what's your thoughts? We'll start with the Phillies against Rorick. Uh, You said that, you know, pretty much nailed it. He's not going to go out and strike out double-digit guys again in this game. 
that was a fluke thing. It happens. It was Minnesota. It was Minnesota on the road. Um, I, I still can't get over it. Like, I, I don't think I've ever pitched Rourke. I don't think I ever will. Um, so for all that being said, uh, what's your thoughts on some of these Philly bats against him? Um, Cal Franco, even though it's righty, um, he'd probably be one of my, my favorite guys to target there. Um, you know, I don't, I don't really love targeting guys against Rorick either um, because the Phillies just aren't a great offense. But, you know, if you're going to start with somebody that's really talented and has some upside, I think Franco's the guy for me on on the Phillies side. If you're going to look at anybody else, it's probably going to be some of the lefties batting high up in the order. Like if uh, Herrera or Hernandez is hitting high up in the order, you could look to them. Yeah, Rourke is a guy that has a massive ground ball rate to righties. So, Franco, tournament option only for me. I agree there. Um, I do like Herrera. I don't know what it is about this guy, but he walks so much. And when he walks, he gets on base. Stolen bases could happen. Runs happen. Just 3,500, I feel like he'll be under owned. So, I like that about him. There's really not a lot to love with the Phillies. Um, and then we go over to the Washington side. Yeah, I like Nola, but if he's going to get hit, it's going to get hit by a lefty and um, probably the best hitting lefty in baseball, Bryce Harper, against him here. What's your thoughts? Oh, so I think I actually lost Nicole. So, yeah, if I'm targeting anybody here um, for – the nationals it's going to be harper uh daniel murphy another guy that really solid against right-handed pitching um we continue to see it with murphy batting in that five spot really solid um a guy that we can target in tournaments for sure don't know how much i'm going to target nola especially in um cash games um if there's anybody it's harper but at 5700 um he's almost unplayable in cash at this point i ex expect him to be Pretty highly owned. Nola is a guy that has a really high woba against lefties. So if that's the case, um, it makes it even more of a fade for me for Harper. Just price. He really needs you know a home run or two to really pay off his value at that price tag. So Harper not going to be a guy that um, I'm going to target here. So moving on to the late slate, we got a four game late slate here. Pretty small late slate, but a small enough slate with a lot of um, hitting options that I feel like we can target some of these games and um, have some fun playing this four-game slate and go a little tournament crazy. Cash games, it's always, you know, interesting to play four-game slates in cash, but, you know, it is what it is at this point. So, you know, looking at this game, uh, first thing that stands out to me, we have John Danks who is really bad against right-handed bats. Um, dating back to last year, he's logged 146 innings in that time. 356 Woba with a 28% hard contact rate. The ground ball rate's only 37%. So the problem here with John Danks is we like to target right-handed pitchers against the Baltimore Orioles. Baltimore, as a team, much better against right-handed pitching than they are left-handed pitching. Even all these righties in this lineup like Machado and Adam Jones, um, you know, much better against righty. So where are we going to target Danks is kind of where it comes down to. And if we're looking at the lineup, you know, Machado, his price is 4,300. He's much better against righties than he is against lefties. Um, Trumbo, 3,800. I feel like he's a good tournament option. Um, and looking at maybe J.J. Hardy, Adam Jones, Better against righties, but Jones is a guy that's only 2,600. Um, so I feel like he's interesting. And then Joey Rickard at 2,500. Those would be my targets here um, for Baltimore in this game. If we get a cheap option, maybe a catcher or something, Caleb Joseph, you know, starts behind the plate. Um, I feel like at 2K in this late slate, getting a catcher against a bad lefty. Very interesting um, for that. Now, if we're looking at the other things um, here for um, Baltimore pitcher Tyler Wilson, Tyler Wilson's a guy that we don't have a lot of data on, but the data we have on Wilson is, you know, he's mediocre. Um, so we're going to target some of these White Sox back. So what's your thoughts on Tyler Wilson against the White Sox, Nicole? Um, I don't think he's a guy that – 
that I would worry about picking on. I think that the the Orioles' righties are going to be the way to go here. Um, you know, he doesn't have a lot of major league experience, but Ricard, if he's leading off again, he hit a three-run homer on Wednesday night, so he'd be a guy I'd look to. Adam Jones and Manny Machado betting at the top of that order. Other guys to target. I think an Orioles stack could be in play here. And, um, of course, you have Chris Davis there, too, that, you know, is going to be a GPP option. Yeah, I agree. Um, what about the White Sox bats here in this game against Wilson? I think it's the day to to target. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I reversed on you, huh, Orioles. No, it's myself. okay. <laughs> I just realized that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, <laughs> so White Sox righties and Orioles righties both, I think, because uh, Wilson doesn't have much upside. He doesn't strike anybody out. The White Sox, big hitters. Abreu has great power against righties. Um, Frazier as well. So they'll be the guys I'm looking to at the top of the order. Um, there aren't a lot of other guys I like to to target much on the White Sox side, but uh, those two I think are going to be you know probably the the most popular and also the guys with the biggest upside. Yeah, I definitely agree. Jose yeah, Abreu, agree. only 3,200. Um, very interesting option for me here. I, I like him a lot for tournaments. And, um, you know, depending on the slate and how much you like just seeing and stuff, you know, Jose Abreu might be a guy that you target in cash games if you can't fit in maybe a guy like Goldschmidt. So I do like um, our boy Jose Abreu here at 3,200. Moving on to the next game, Atlanta at Boston. Boston, massive game on Wednesday night. Um, Clay Buckholtz in this game against um, just Chasin. Uh, Chasin is only 6K, off to a really decent start. Um, almost a hit per inning, but he's striking out over a, a guy per inning this season. So he's an interesting option. What's your thoughts on Chasin and Buckholtz here? I'm kind of expecting Chasin to regress to the norm at some point, just from what he's been in his career as a pitcher. Um, yeah, it's kind of been surprising, but, you know, the Red Sox bats are hot now, and I expect them to get to him here. It's a good hitter's park that are in Boston, so I think they have a good matchup here, and they're also just crushing right-handed pitching this year, 347 Woba against righties. So both righties and lefties are going to be in a good spot. The Red Sox are going to be a team I'm going to target. Yeah, uh, I'm right there with you. I like the Red Sox a lot in this game. Like Mookie, like Mookie Betts, I like David Ortiz, I like, David like Ortiz. Pedroia, um, Travis Shaw. Uh, I like pretty much all these Boston guys here in this game. Even I think if you want to play a guy like Hanley Ramirez in the tournament, um, I'm not I'm not going to hate that as well. Pedroia coming off of a monster game on Wednesday night. Pedroia's hitting the ball very well right now. A um, little over 330 batting average right now. He has 30 hits and 90 at-bats. Don't expect a double home run game from him every night. But expect a chance for him to get multi hits, uh, some runs scored, some RBIs in this game. I'm not on Chasin tonight, and I, I really like these Red Sox bats. Um, no, yeah, looking, another two that yeah. add would be Jackie Bradley, I guess, huh? He's only 2700. Yeah, I just I, Bradley's a guy that I only play on a wraparound stack, like I or a one off play on a team where like he kind of fits in. I just. The nine hitter, especially when they went back home here, we don't get the benefit of Bradley hitting like seventh and getting the extra at bat being on the away team um, like we did when he was in the National League Park. So Bradley at 2,700, one off play and tournaments only for me. Now looking at the Atlanta Braves um, against Clay Buckholtz, Clay Buckholtz is an interesting option for me here because if we look at the Braves, not not a lot of stuff's going to scare you here um, in this Braves lineup. So what's your thoughts on Buckholtz here? I think the Braves can throw a lot of lefties at you, but I think Buckholtz is in a really good spot. You know, obviously a good spot to get the win for him. Um, he's only 8K on DraftKings, so keep that in mind if you're kind of looking for bargain shopping between sites. It's a good price point there. Um, yeah, like you said, not a lot to be afraid of in the Braves lineup. You work around Freeman, and there's nobody else with a ton of power that really scares you for them to put up, you know, a big crooked number and really do some damage. So I think this could be a chance for Buckles. He, You know, he has talent, and he goes back and forth. He looks great one game, and 
then I'll have a blow up start, but I'm hoping that this is going to be a spot where he can really produce. And I think he's probably going to be a pitcher that, that you can kind of trust in cash games um, as well as GPPs. The one problem with it, it's just, just so inconsistent. inconsistent. Um, yeah, it's scary. So <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if I can get behind Buckholtz in cash games and tournaments. I definitely can take a shot on him. Can't play him in cash here for me. Now, looking at some of these Braves bats, I, I don't want a lot of these bats. No, there's, like I said, like I said I don't have how much power. Um, I mean, they are cheap. They are cheap. <laughs> so, so. It's just like, it's just like, do you even really look at it and say, oh, that guy's got a lot of upside. There's nobody besides Freeman. And even then, you're afraid that he might just get walked or, you know, not have any runners on base to drive in. So, yeah, I wouldn't target many Atlanta bats. Yeah, I will yeah, take a shot on Freeman in tournaments. tournaments. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. With 100. 100. St. Louis Cardinals at the Arizona Diamondbacks, um, a game that we definitely can target, another good hitting environment. Pretty much a lot of good hitting environments here in this late slate with Baltimore, Boston, and Arizona. Michael Waka, Ruby De La Rosa. Waka's been a guy that's been really up or down. Um, hasn't really had a good start outside of Milwaukee. He was really targeted high against San Diego and um, – Six innings, four hits, four walks, zero strikeouts against the Padres. Did pick up the win, but only 24 fantasy points in that game. Um, what's your thoughts on Michael Walker here going to Chase Field? I just don't like the upside for him in this in this spot. Like you said, it's a bad ballpark, and the K upside isn't there. And you know that's that's the key in DFS. So you can't strike many of these guys out, and um, you know you have to worry about. Of course, Chase Field just giving up lots of runs, right, and being a great hitting environment. I don't think this is a good spot to target him. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I will not have any exposure um, to him in this game. Ruby De La Rosa is a guy that I'll pick my spots with Ruby De La Rosa. If he gets a team that's very right-handed heavy, um, I'll take a shot on him. The Cardinals are a very right-handed heavy team, but – uh, it's not a spot that I'm going to target Ruby De La Rosa. The Cardinals is just a team all around that's just too good for Ruby De La Rosa. Uh, do you agree, disagree? What's your thoughts? I agree. Lefties crush Ruby De La Rosa. And I think the Cardinals lefties are in a great spot as GPP plays here because, of course, you have Brandon Moss, who always has the potential to hit two home runs. And Carpenter, if he's leading off, you know, he's a great cash game play. You have Hazel Baker, who's just been off to a really good start this year. And so those are going to be the big lefty bats to target. But um, I couldn't believe this when I looked it up. Cardinals have a 381 Woba this year against right-handed pitching. So I guess some of the righties have been hitting right-handed pitching so far this season, too. Now that's a small sample size. But, but yeah, you've, you've really got to target lefties against Ruby De La Rosa. Just in his career, he's shown that he can't get them out. So let's talk about some of the visiting bats here for the Cardinals. You mentioned um, Moss. I think he's a really high upside play. I agree with you there. Then we see a lot of righties in this lineup. Um, you know, Carpenter, you know, you nailed him. Great cash game play, batting a leadoff, always a guy you can target in cash games. I, I like Matt Carpenter a lot. $4,100 price tag is probably going to price him out of my cash lineup when it comes to roster construction. You can fit him. I feel like he's a great play. Now we're looking at, you know, Piscotti, Holiday came back to the lineup, Gruchuk. Um, if Hazel Baker makes the lineup, I feel like you can play him. And um, I might take a shot on a guy like Piscotti, who's shown some home run upside, and maybe Holiday, who I, I feel like Holiday, I have a bounce back year. Uh, do you like any of the righties? I know you like the lefties, like you mentioned. Yeah, I, I'd say probably Piscotti would be the guy I would target. Um, you know, he strikes out less than Gershuk, so if it comes down to those two, he, he could hit higher in the lineup too, so that helps. But, um, yeah, I don't mind taking a shot on some of the righties. Um, kind of depends where they hit in the lineup for me, but, uh, you know, it doesn't matter as much in GPPs, but 
it's definitely something I pay a lot of attention to for cash games. So, now what's your thoughts on some of these Diamondback bats? You know, Chase Field's a really tough ballpark to pitch in, and uh, I feel like we can target some of these guys in tournaments. Certainly, they're going to be in play. Um, Paul Goldschmidt's kind of flown to the radar a little bit so far on the season. You know, we just expect so much of him that I feel like he's just going to have this huge game that's going to come and people are going to be able to get it at low ownership. Um, this could be the spot for him. He obviously can hit righties and lefties. Anytime David Peralta is facing a righty, I like to look at him. He's 3,400 on FanDuel. Um, of course, they're playing at home, so it's a great hitting environment, as we already talked about. Um, you know, Tomas has power. He could get a hold of one. He could be in play there. Um, if Jake Lamb's hitting second in the order, I think he's an option. Yeah, Jake Lamb's a guy that has upside. Peralta at home against righties throughout his career. Just insane numbers. I feel like he's a guy that you can look at as well. And, and I agree with Goldschmidt. It, he's just he's too good to continue to have this down year that he's having, like uh, under a 250 batting average. He had a home run in um, Wednesday night's game against Wainwright. So hopefully that gets him going. And Goldschmidt, you know, his price tag's still up there, 4600 So his low ownership should be low um, with a guy like Ortiz. On this slate, is there anybody else you want to talk about before we move on to the last game of the night? Yeah, I do have a question about John Segura. Do you think this resurgence is real? I mean, he kind of had down years, and now that he came over to the Diamondbacks, he's really been playing well. But I don't know if we can if we can trust it, if we expect him to reg regress, or if he's just turned a corner and figured something out. Yeah, um, I know for a fact there's at least um, one guy, Lewis Cards, um, one of the analysts here at Rotor Grinders, joined us on the podcast last week. He was really high on Segura coming into the season. He thought that this change in lineup and playing every day and just you know being in a better lineup like um, Cardinals was going to help him, and he pretty much nailed it. So. I personally wasn't, you know, high on him coming into the season. I did jump on him for that little hot streak that he was on there. And um, just batting leadoff in this lineup, you always have potential. So is, if he's in the leadoff spot and he continues to hit leadoff, I feel like he's a guy that could end the season over 280, 290 batting average this year. Yeah, you know, I don't mind him leading off in that offense. So I think it, it could be a good spot for him. And it's just um, just somebody I wanted to touch on because – um, you know, he's kind of bounced back from what we're, we've seen here in the last couple of years. So just wanted to touch on that. No, yeah, no problem. That's what we're here for. Miami at the Dodgers, Jose Fernandez uh, and Medea. Uh, Medea has been the talk of the season. This guy's stuff is just disgusting. He is so nasty on the hill. He was able to go into Coors Field and – Pitch like it was any other ballpark. And coming into this game against the Marlins, I love Madea on this slate. I feel like he is the um, top guy for me over Jose Fernandez. In the evening slate, yes. This is a very interesting game. Um, I mean, I think I'd say if you're in the all-day slate, I still probably prefer Arietta, But I agree with you. He has great stuff. And before the Coors Field start, he was just amazing on Sunday Night Baseball when he played the Giants. Um, I guess our concern has to be small sample size and if he can keep it up. But when you just watch him pitch, he passes the eye test for me. Yeah, I've watched him pitch a couple times this year. His stuff is legit. Like His stuff is so nasty. I like watching him pitch. I'm probably going to end up watching this game tomorrow night just to watch him pitch. And uh, his stuff is disgusting. And um, – Jose Fernandez, his stuff is disgusting, too. The guy has massive strikeout upside, as we've seen this year. Um, his strikeout rate, kind of just disgusting um, when we're looking at it. It's pretty nasty. So, Jose Fernandez, he has upside, but the Dodgers are really good against right-handed pitching, and Fernandez is much better at home. His price tag is only 10-7, so I think for that, Jose Fernandez is still a tournament option for me, but I think I'm going Medea and cash here. Yeah, Fernandez is definitely a tournament option. He does have electric stuff. He, When he gets it going, he can really just start striking everybody out. But I agree, the Dodgers, you have to be a little bit scared of them. 
especially against a righty with all those left-handed bats that they can throw at you. Um, kind of an interesting spot. It could be kind of a contrarian GPP play that if you really get it going, could be lower owned and, you know, take it to the top of the leaderboard. But um, probably not my favorite guy to target, like you said, in cash games. Um, another guy I really do like to watch pitch, though, because he's still pretty young. He's come back from injury and and returned to form. And um, this is going to be an interesting game because <laughs> – I guess if you're going to pick a hitter, it's got to be somebody that you think can just hit a home run because, you know, both these guys could be on and it could be quite the pitcher's duel. Yeah, it could be definitely a pitcher's game. Um, he could set up very nice against pitchers. So I, I agree in that aspect. But, you know, looking at it, I feel like um, I'll probably target some of these Los Angeles bats. You know, I'll probably target a guy um, like Adrian Gonzalez, um, like Justin Turner, um, maybe even Grandola, 2800. Some of these guys that I feel like could hit Fernandez. So, you know, I'm not going to go out of my way to pick on Fernandez, but his numbers even last year, um, you know, very small sample size last year and this year, only 35 innings, but he has struggles with lefties coming off this injury. So, so. If I can get some of these lefties at low ownership, and I feel like um, even on a four-game slate, picking on Fernandez is going to be low low. Um, I'll definitely do it in tournaments. Uh, we have three games before this game, and we talked about just great hitters' environments. There's no reason to target this um, Miami-Los Angeles game for cash game plays. Stanton, he grew up right outside of Dodger Stadium, like 25, 30 miles, um, and he has some incredible numbers at Dodger Stadium. So if I had to take one Marlins bat, it would definitely be him. Yeah, hard to disagree with you on that one. Um, we know he can hit <laughs> home runs in bunches, so he has to be the guy on the, the Marlins side, and I wouldn't spend too much time trying to fit other guys from the Marlins in, in my lineups. Yeah, yeah I agree. Um, it's just not going to be a game that I'm going to, I guess, spend a lot of effort would be the best way um, to put it. I'm not going to go too crazy. So, all right, let's get into my favorite section of the podcast. And um, I, I got one up on um, the co-host guest um, you know, panel here on Wednesday night with the Arnado home run. So you're going to have to try to help these guys out. They need some home runs. So um, we're going to play home run derby. We're going to do it snake style. We'll let you have first pick, and uh, we're going to take three people that we feel like is going to hit home runs in these games. We're going to use the all-day slate since there's only four games in each of the um, early in the morning. So I'll let you have first pick here. Who do you got? Well, I mentioned the Orioles right-handed bats earlier, so I'm going to start out with Manny Machado. Manny Machado. That's interesting. I'm not too heavy on the Orioles. I'll probably fade Machado, so that's interesting. I'm going I'm going poppy here. Uh, I, I pretty much try to go poppy every day because I just, I'm a huge Red Sox fan, so homer pick is poppy. Uh, I like him a lot in this game, and I feel like he's in a great spot. Um, the other guy I'm going to go here is – I'm going to go a rare Matt Carpenter home run. So I like him a lot against Rudy De La Rosa. And if I can fit him in, I'm going to fit him in. And I'll let you have your next two picks here. Sorry. I'm going to start out with Paul Goldschmidt. And I will take – J.D. Martinez and see if he can stay hot here. That's my guy. No, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, I, I try to go really crazy with my last pick. I always try to do it to kind of give a guy that I feel like is going to be low on that has some upside. So I'm going to go out on the line here, and I'm going to go J.J. Hardy against John Diggs um, as my crazy pick for a home run in this, um, you know, all-base slate. So I like him. I like some of these righties. He stinks. Um, I don't like Machado, but I like some of these righties. Um, all right, so last segment here before we get out of here. If you had to pick one pitch on the slate, um, at the end of the day, it's going to have a win in the win column on Vandal. Um, give me a guy that's right for a win tonight. Well, considering the Braves have won, what, four games so far on the season? <laughs> I'm going to go with Clay Buchholz here. 
Yeah, it, it seems to be a trend. Um, Jay, or, um, Jay and Tulane yesterday went with um, Stephen Wright. That panned out for him. It seems to be a trend to pick on the Braves. Uh, Clay Buckholz is your call. I'm going to go Medea. I'm going to stick to my guns here. I'm going to take Medea against Fernandez. I think Medea is the way to go in the late slate, so I'm going to stick to my guns with that. Nicole, it was a pleasure to have you on the podcast. First female, you get to, you get to say, like, Hey, I was the first female to join the morning grind. This thing is a thing that continues to go on and on. You could be the first. first. Awesome. I expect to get a trophy or something for that. No. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. They can find you on Twitter at nvalencia30. Um, she's a good follow. If you ever have any questions, she's always somebody that you can ask. And um, she's a pretty cool person. Like I said, I've got to hang out with her a couple times. Nicole, thanks a lot for joining us here on the morning grind. Absolutely, Stevie. It was my pleasure. Good luck, guys. We'll be back tomorrow with another podcast on a Friday. And it's the same old, same old. It's 2410 joining me on his normal Friday and Monday. And um, until then, I hope you guys have a great Thursday. And we will see you tomorrow.